So my final point, my final puzzle and my uh, question that I've promised to answer. What about helicopter money? Could the ECB do more? If, if QE asset purchases work mainly through the cost of finance and by affecting credit and term premia, would it have been possible for the ECB to make a quicker impact on aggregate economic activity and inflation by some more direct means such as helicopter money that we've often heard so much about? Well, I want to make two points about helicopter money. First of all, I want to make the point that yes, it could work, and I'm, in this I'm contradicting some distinguished um, uh, uh, academic authorities, but I'm also going to make the point that it may be politically just a step too far in Europe. Scholars have debated the possible effectiveness of helicopter money, and several of them have argued that it cannot really have much of an effect, and I think that view is mistaken because, and it's, that view comes from appealing to the properties of a sort of long-term equilibrium. You look at a long-term equilibrium without helicopter money and a long-term equilibrium with helicopter money and you say, look, I've proved there cannot be any, any difference. It's a kind of, well, it's a Ricardian equivalence type of argument. It assumes that expectations and spending behavior are fully adapted to any shock that has occurred. But the call for helicopter money is not made at times when we're in a full equilibrium. It's made when the economy is far from equilibrium and when many economic agents are constrained, liquidity constrained, not, by their, not constrained by their lifetime resources, but by liquidity constraints. So it could include governments as well as lower income households. Models that predict little impact for helicopter money do not take account of such liquidity constraints. So as, as Milton Friedman supposed, Economic agents picking up dollar bills or euro bills dropped from a helicopter will sh surely go and spend most of them, thereby increasing aggregate demand and driving up the price level in the, with an impact effect, as well as generating more economic activity. To the extent that helicopter money breaks a liquidity constraint for the recipients, it might therefore unleash a substantially different impact effect than these models assume. But when it comes to considering how such a policy might be implemented in practice, it becomes evident that this is an area where the euro area suffers from a shortage of mandate. The distribution of newly created cash without any quid pro quo raises a question that's not inherent in quantitative easing asset purchases. To whom will the cash be distributed? If you're doing QE, if you're buying government bonds, you say, I'm buying government bonds. Who, who will offer me the cheapest price? And then the problem of who you're dealing with is solved. You say, I'm going to give out some money. Well, this person is closest to me here. But that's not a good method. I'll, let me think of another method. Equally to everyone in the euro area? Well, when you put it like that, we see immediately we're in the area of fiscal policy. You're talking about allocating grant money international fiscal policy at that. Can the ECB, could the ECB take it on itself to make some kind of lump sum distribution across the 19 countries with their wide differences in income levels within and between countries? I did a little calculation. Uh, supposing the ECB did helicopter money on the same scale as it made the asset purchases. Well, that would give everybody in Lithuania, uh, on a and equally distributed to everybody in the euro area. People in Lithuania would, would get a 25% bonus every month to their average income. Well, sorry, the, the average income of Lithuania, not every person's income. This figure for Luxembourg would be 4%. Now that might be a great idea, but is it an idea that a central bank can adjudicate on? Are we not? definitely going to the point where somebody is going to blow the whistle and shout stop and say, we gave you independence to maintain inflation stability. We didn't give you independence to hand out goodies to different countries in amounts that are uh, you know, quant of different significance. And of course you could divide, divide it, not, not the same amount to everybody, you could choose another scheme. So. Central banks could dream up loads of ways of distributing helicopter money. Of course, quantitative easing has distributional effects, more complex than they appear at first sight. 
but asset purchases have long been accepted as a normal activity of a central bank. And thus, central banks have an implicit, if not explicit, power to carry them out. I think that the central banking history and law, which we appealed at the beginning to um, that central banks use to justify aggressive policies countering financial instability, they can hardly be said to include the endorsement of such quasi-fiscal action as a helicopter money would, in, would involve. So the ECB would certainly be seen as exceeding its mandate by many people and entering into activities lacking democratic legitimacy, and a legal challenge would, I expect, be successful. But much the same effect could be achieved by the creation of an understanding between governments and the ECB that the latter, that the ECB, would maintain financial market conditions through continued intervention in government bond markets to enable governments to make a needed coordinated expansion of spending to achieve the desired expansion of aggregate demand in the euro area without this spilling over onto their cost of borrowing. This would have been a type of, of helicopter money which was not used. Of course, such coordination would need extremely careful governance to ensure continued central bank independence and to prevent the risk of fiscal dominance. What would be needed is independent measures adopted by fiscal and monetary authorities, each taking account of what the other is doing. This brings us back to the macroeconomic policy failures of 2010 and 11, and refer to the reluctance of those euro area governments that had sufficient fiscal headroom to keep spending, and the ECB's failure to recognize during 2011 the emerging deficiency of aggregate demand. At its heart, the call for helicopter money is essentially a call for more expansionary fiscal policy, which would clearly have been appropriate in 2010 and 2011. The independent central bank's role would be to ensure that it does not act in such a way that financial markets respond to the needed fiscal expansion by choking it off. Achieving this within the legal and political structures of the euro area would be delicate and challenging, perhaps not impossible if it proved necessary as it does not at the present moment to bring inflation back on target. So I think the, the, the moment has passed, but the moment could come again. 